Dear Lord, as we rise to meet each new day, please let us be filled with your spirit. Wherever we go, let us spread love, joy, peace, goodness, and faithfulness. Let us desire to become more like you and to worship you in all we do. Help us desire these things so much more than the sin that entices us. Thank you for always going before us. In Jesus' name, Amen. What happened to the Ark of the Covenant is a question that has fascinated theologians, Bible students, and archaeologists for centuries. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah of Judah ordered the caretakers of the Ark of the Covenant to return it to the temple in Jerusalem, 2 Chronicles chapter 35 verses 1 to 6, cf. 2 Kings chapter 23 verses 21 to 23. That is the last time the Ark's location is mentioned in the scriptures. Forty years later, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon captured Jerusalem and raided the temple. Less than ten years after that, he returned, took what was left in the temple, and then burnt it and the city to the ground. So what happened to the ark? Was it taken by Nebuchadnezzar? Was it destroyed with the city? Or was it removed and hidden safely away, as evidently happened when Pharaoh Shishak of Egypt raided the temple during the reign of Solomon's son Rehoboam? Evidently, because, if Shishak had managed to take the ark, why did Josiah ask the Levites to return it? If the ark was in Egypt, a la the plotline of raiders of the lost ark, the Levites would not have possessed it and therefore could not have returned it. Interestingly, Revelation chapter 11 verse 19 mentions the ark as being in heaven. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake and a severe hailstorm. This verse has led some to speculate that the ark was taken up to heaven to be preserved there. But the ark that John sees in his vision of heaven is probably not the same ark that Moses constructed. We know that the articles in the tabernacle were, copies of the heavenly things, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 23, and that the sanctuary itself was but, a copy and shadow of what is in heaven, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. Revelation chapter 11 deals with the sounding of the seventh trumpet, which ushers in a final round of judgments upon the earth. John's glimpse of the ark is probably meant as a reminder that God has not forgotten his people, that he is present with them, and that true worship will soon be restored. The non-canonical book of 2 Maccabees reports that just prior to the Babylonian invasion, Jeremiah, following a divine revelation, ordered that the tabernacle and the ark should accompany him and he went off to the mountain which Moses climbed to see God's inheritance, i.e., Mount Nebo, cf. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 1. When Jeremiah arrived there, he found a room in a cave in which he put the tent, the ark, and the altar of incense, then he blocked up the entrance, 2-4-5. However, some of those who followed him came up intending to mark the path, but they could not find it. When Jeremiah heard of this, he reproved them. The place is to remain unknown until God gathers his people together again and shows them mercy. Then the Lord will disclose these things, and the glory of the Lord will be seen in the cloud, just as it appeared in the time of Moses and when Solomon prayed that the temple might be gloriously sanctified, 2-6-8. It is not known if this secondhand, see 2-1, account is accurate. Even if it is, we will not know until the Lord comes back, as the account itself claims. Other theories concerning the whereabouts of the lost ark include Rabbis Shlomo Goran and Yehuda Getz's claim that it is hidden beneath the temple mount, having been buried there before Nebuchadnezzar could steal it away. Unfortunately, the Temple Mount is now home to the Dome of the Rock, an Islamic holy site, and the local Muslim community refuses to allow it to be excavated. So we cannot know if Rabbis Goran and Getz are correct. Lorem Ipsum. Scene script. Have you ever pondered over the ultimate fate of the Ark of the Covenant, the sacred chest described in the Book of Exodus? This enigmatic artifact, shrouded in mystery and steeped in religious significance, has intrigued scholars, historians, and believers alike for centuries. Let's take a step back into the annals of history to unravel the enigma of the Ark. The Ark of the Covenant, also known as the Ark of the Testimony, was a wooden chest clad with gold, housing two stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments. As per the Book of Exodus, these were the commandments God communicated to Moses on Mount Sinai. The Ark was considered the physical manifestation of God's presence amidst the Israelites, and it held immense significance in their religious and social life. Constructed according to divine instructions, the Ark was a work of exquisite craftsmanship. Its lid, known as the Mercy Seat, was adorned with two cherubim of gold, their wings overshadowing the cover. This was more than just an ornamental feature. It was here, between these cherubim, that God was said to communicate with Moses. 
But the Ark was not merely a religious symbol, it was attributed with awe-inspiring supernatural powers. Biblical accounts describe how the Ark brought down the walls of Jericho, inflicted plagues upon the Philistines, and even caused the death of Uzzah when he touched it. It was a divine instrument of massive power, a conduit between the earthly and the divine. The Ark accompanied the Israelites through their desert wanderings and into their conquest of Canaan. It resided in the Holy of Holies, the innermost sanctum of the tabernacle, and later the Temple of Solomon. But after the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem, the Ark vanished from the historical records. And so the Ark was not just a symbol, but a divine instrument of massive power. But where did it go? To understand its disappearance we must first trace the journey of the Ark. Indeed the Ark of the Covenant's journey is a fascinating tale filled with reverence, mystery and wonder. Our journey begins at Mount Sinai where according to the Bible God instructed Moses to create the Ark. It was here that the Ark's journey first began, carried on the shoulders of Levites, the chosen priests of the Israelites. From Mount Sinai the Ark journeyed through the wilderness for 40 years, guiding the Israelites on their exodus to the Promised Land. Once in Canaan the Ark moved from place to place, always revered, always feared. It stayed in Gilgal for a while then journeyed to Shiloh, a prominent religious center for the Israelites. It was said to have brought blessings and curses, instilling awe and fear in the hearts of those who encountered it. But the Ark's journey did not end there. It was captured by the Philistines during a battle, but was returned after they were smitten with plagues. It was then taken to Kiriath Jerim, where it resided for 20 years, before King David with much fanfare brought it to Jerusalem. Finally, the Ark found its resting place in the grandest location of all, the magnificent Temple of Solomon. Built with the finest materials, the temple was a fitting home for the Ark. There, in the Holy of Holies, the innermost and most sacred area of the temple, the Ark was placed. It was here that the Ark's journey seemingly ended, its location well documented and secure. But the Ark's journey is a tale of twists and turns, and its end is no different. For it is here, in the heart of the temple, that the Ark seemingly vanishes from history. The Ark, once the most sacred and powerful symbol of the Israelites, simply disappears, leaving behind a mystery that has baffled scholars and enthusiasts for centuries. And there, in the heart of the temple, the Ark seemingly vanishes from history. But how can such a powerful object simply vanish? Let's delve into the various theories. The disappearance of the Ark of the Covenant is one of the greatest enigmas of biblical history. Over time, numerous theories have surfaced, each trying to explain where the Ark might have ended up. Firstly, let's consider the viewpoint of many biblical scholars. They suggest that the Ark was most likely hidden for safekeeping when the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem in 586 BCE. They point to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, where some believe the Ark is still concealed within a secret chamber. Historians on the other hand, often lean towards a different theory. They propose that the Ark was taken as spoils of war by the Babylonians. It could have been melted down for its gold, its holy contents discarded or destroyed. Then we have the archaeologists. Some among them argue that the Ark's fate is tied up with the Knights Templar, a medieval Christian military order. They propose that the Templars found the Ark during the Crusades and spirited it away to Europe, where it remains hidden to this day. Another intriguing theory comes from the traditions of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. They believe the Ark resides in a chapel in the city of Aksum. The Ark, they say, was taken to Ethiopia by Menelik, the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, and has been guarded by a succession of monks ever since. Then there are those who suggest the Ark was supernaturally taken up to heaven, or that it never existed at all, being merely a powerful symbol created by biblical writers. The truth is, without concrete evidence, all these theories remain just that, theories. Each one has its own set of arguments and counterarguments, its own set of believers and skeptics. From secret chambers in the Temple Mount to distant lands in Africa, the theories are as fascinating as they are varied. The Ark's mysterious fate has spurred numerous modern-day quests. In the realm of mystery and the unexplained, the Ark of the Covenant holds a special place. Its disappearance has sparked a veritable gold rush of seekers, each hoping to be the one to unlock the secrets of this ancient artifact. Let's delve into some of the most notable expeditions and research in the hunt for the Ark. One such quest was led by famed archaeologist Dr. Vendel Jones. Inspired by the biblical accounts Jones spent decades in the deserts of the Middle East, digging through layers of history in search of the lost Ark. His expeditions brought forth fascinating discoveries but the Ark itself remained elusive. 
Another prominent quest was undertaken by British researcher Graham Hancock, who proposed in his book, The Sign and the Seal, that the Ark was hidden in a church in Ethiopia. His theory spurred interest worldwide and led many others to embark on their own explorations. The Ark's allure isn't limited to the world of academia and research, it has also found a place in popular culture. The most recognizable of these references is perhaps the blockbuster movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. This Steven Spielberg classic brought the Ark story to the silver screen, inspiring a new generation of Ark seekers. Despite the countless expeditions, the exhaustive research, and the myriad theories, the Ark of the Covenant continues to evade discovery. Is it hidden away in some remote desert, buried under centuries of rubble? Is it nestled in an unassuming church in Ethiopia, watched over by devoted monks? Or is it perhaps waiting in some yet undiscovered location, biding its time until it's ready to be found? Despite the tireless efforts, the Ark's whereabouts remain elusive. And so, the quest for the Ark of the Covenant continues, a modern-day treasure hunt fueled by the allure of the unknown, the thrill of the chase, and the eternal human desire to solve the unsolvable. So, after all these centuries, the Ark's fate remains a mystery. We've traveled through time, retracing the Ark's journey from its biblical origins to its last known location. We've explored the various theories surrounding its disappearance. Was it hidden to protect it? Was it destroyed? Or did it simply vanish into thin air? We've also delved into the numerous modern-day quests to find the Ark. From the depths of the Ethiopian highlands to the labyrinthine tunnels under Jerusalem's Temple Mount, the search for the Ark continues to this day. Despite advanced technology and countless expeditions, the Ark remains elusive, adding to its enigma. The Ark of the Covenant isn't just a golden chest from antiquity, it's a symbol of faith, a repository of divine power, and a testament to the human thirst for knowledge and discovery. Its mysterious disappearance only adds to its allure, making it a subject of fascination in popular culture. From Indiana Jones's cinematic quest to countless books and documentaries, the Ark continues to captivate us. You see, the Ark's allure goes beyond its gold and its alleged supernatural powers. It's the mystery that surrounds it, the unanswered questions, the tantalizing possibility of its existence that keep us enthralled. It's the centuries-old stories, the legends, the myths, and the unyielding faith of countless generations that have kept the Ark's story alive. And perhaps that's where the Ark's true power lies, not in its physical existence but in its ability to captivate our imagination, to keep us seeking answers, to keep us curious. The Ark of the Covenant, whether it still exists or not, continues to be a symbol of the human quest for knowledge, for understanding, for connection with our past. As we continue to search for the Ark, we're not just searching for a golden chest, we're searching for a piece of our history, a piece of our identity, and a piece of the divine mystery that is as old as time itself. Perhaps the Ark's true power lies not in its physical existence, but in its ability to captivate our imagination and keep us seeking answers to the mysteries of our past. Explorer Vendel Jones, among others, believes that an artifact found among the Dead Sea Scrolls, the enigmatic Copper Scroll of Qumran Cave 3, is actually a treasure map of sorts detailing the location of a number of precious treasures taken from the temple before the Babylonians arrived, among them the Lost Ark of the Covenant. Whether or not this is true remains to be seen, as no one has yet been able to locate all of the necessary geographical landmarks listed on the scroll. Interestingly, some scholars speculate that the Copper Scroll may actually be the record referred to in 2 Maccabees 2-1 and 4, which describes Jeremiah hiding the Ark. While this is an interesting speculation, it remains unsubstantiated. Former East African correspondent for The Economist, Graham Hancock, published a book in 1992 entitled The Sign and the Seal, The Quest for the Lost Ark of the Covenant, in which he argued that the Ark had been stowed away in St. Mary of Zion's Church in Axum, an ancient city of Ethiopia. Explorer Robert Cornuke of the BASE Institute also believes the Ark may now reside in Axum. However, no one has yet found it there. Similarly, Archaeologist Michael Sanders believes the Ark is hidden away in an ancient Egyptian temple in the Israeli village of Jaharia, but he has yet to actually find it there. A doubtful Irish tradition maintains that the Ark is buried under the Hill of Terra in Ireland. Some scholars believe that this is the source of the Irish pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, legend. Even less believable are the claims of Ron Wyatt and Tom Crotzer. Wyatt claiming to actually have seen the lost Ark of the Covenant buried under Mount Calvary and Crotzer claiming to have seen it on Mount Pisgah near Mount Nebo. Both of these men are held in low esteem by the archaeological community, 
and neither has been able to substantiate the wild claims with any evidence. In the end, the Ark remains lost to all but God. Interesting theories like the ones presented above continue to be offered, that the Ark has yet to be found. The writer of 2 Maccabees may very well be right. We may not find out what happened to the lost Ark of the Covenant until the Lord himself returns.